for an Academy Award winning movie. So what I want to know is what do you want out of your life? Start to visualize that clearly. And we have so much that we can do in the time that we're in. Right now, you are in this beautiful time in your life. But guess what? If I saw you in 10 years, I'd say the same thing because you're still alive. You still have time on the clock. There's still room to make, make changes. Humans are fascinating. We all share two things in common that I've found. Doesn't matter how rich, how poor, what our skin color, sexual orientation, what part of the world we're from, doesn't matter. We all share two things according to me. One, I'm gonna prove it to you right now in activity. Raise your hand if you've ever been happy. Now you don't have to be happy right now, okay? Put your hands down. Raise your hand if you've ever been sad. Raise your hand if you think you're sexy. I got some bad news for you guys. I caught a lot of you guys looking around for approval on that. Like, am I sexy? <laughs> Look, first thing we all share in common, we all have emotions. Barring neurological damage, and even then, the emotion just might not be visible. We all have emotions. We've all been sad, happy. Many of us have knelt over graves and wept for the loved ones that we've lost. We've all been scared to get a telephone call. We've all had our heart pound when we've told somebody we loved them or they told us they loved us. We all have emotions. And I think emotions is like the human currency. And, and the way to get rich in life is not put a bunch of money in your bank account. It's to experience the emotions of life. I find it so sad when I travel the planet and I see people who have just decided that's it. I'm going to check out emotionally. I'm just going to be numb. I'm going to do it through many different ways. But I'm just going to sedate myself so I'm walking dead. I'm not going to ever show any emotion. I'm going to act like the tough guy, the reserved girl. What's that about? you got to have passion. you got to have enthusiasm because that's what makes life worth living. When we are dealing with each other, we can't, just, we can't just talk to each other because talking, exchanging information, that's just communicating. And they probably even have majors here called you know, communications majors, right? Well, there's something that this university and all universities that I've ever come to is missing. It's, it's above communication, and that's connection. So what's the difference? Well, when you connect, you're not just exchanging information. You're exchanging emotion. You're exchanging humanity. You're looking into somebody's eyes and saying, you know what, I don't know what you're going through, but I sure would like to find out. When we connect with somebody, we let them know that we care about them, and they feel it. Let me ask you, I want you to think of your favorite professor or teacher in your life, OK? Just think right now. Think of who you really like, okay? And I'm guessing it's not the person that had the best syllabus. I'm guessing it's not the person that had the best lectures or the best PowerPoint presentations. No, it's the one you felt cared about you. It's the one when you were around them, you felt like they cared about your future. And they cared about your present and your past. And that's connection. We have to connect together on this planet. When I meet people that are really good at connecting, and I have spent time with the Dalai Lama, President Clinton, some of the most amazing connectors on this planet. And they're the ones that really get known for connection because they care about people. The question is, how much of your energy is being spent on caring about yourself, thinking about yourself, versus how much are you thinking also about others? If you go to a party and you're not happy and, or you go to a gathering and you're like feeling all alone and like there's all these people but you don't know anybody, you're thinking about yourself, aren't you? You know, I'll, I'll just boil it down what depression is. It, it, it really is an addiction to thinking about yourself. Because when you start thinking about others, it gives you momentum to want to help humanity and want to get involved. 
And so we share that element of connection. We all have the emotions. But you said, Sean, that there was two things we all share in common. Yeah, and the other one is much darker. It's much more limiting. The other element that I found all human beings share that really keeps them playing small in life, missing out on stepping into their visions, is the size of their butt. And I know what you're thinking. He didn't say that. What? I'm talking about your B-U-T, right? I would go up and ask that person out on a date, but I'm not good looking enough. Hey, I, I, I graduate, but I'm not smart enough, right? I get an amazing job, but, you know, it'd just be easier to, to play it safe. I would exercise and eat right, but I don't have the time, Sean. Look, we all have butts, and they all smell, okay? They all stink. It's true. All butts stink. When we sit back on our excuses, but I don't have the time, money, energy. When we come from our insecurities, but I'm not pretty enough, tall enough, smart enough. When we have our fears, but what if I fail? But what if I look bad? But what if they don't like me? Whenever we come from being stuck on our butts, Life passes us by. Now here's what that looks like. It, it, there's a paradox. It's not that you can't see what you want out there. It's still out there. But when somebody's stuck on their butt, it looks like this. Oh, Sean, I'd read, I'd read your book, but I just don't like to read. Oh, Sean, I'd, I'd totally ask that person out on a date, but, but they're way out of my league. Oh, Sean, I'd get more active on campus. <sighs> but no one would listen to me. And we just begin to atrophy. And we start seeing everything we want out there pass us by. We see the people we'd like to be in love with in love with other people. And we see the jobs that we always wanted to have passing us over. And we see the body that we would like to be in being run by us, by someone else. Look, I do believe that every single person is capable of being happy. I think every single one of us is capable of being wealthy to whatever that is for you. I think we're capable of being in great shape and healthy and feeling good about the way we look and feel. The problem is not us, it's our butts. The problem is we get stuck on our fears, our excuses, our insecurities, and they grow out of, out of proportion. And so then other people feel sorry for us. And they, and they go to come up to you to ask you a question, and they think, hmm, no, that person's really stuck on their butt. I'm not going to ask them out. I'm not going to ask them to get involved. I'm not going to ask them if they want to go to the gym. I'm just going to pass them by because they look really comfortable on their butt. I'll tell you right now, you know, outside of these walls, there's another element that you may not be aware of that holds people back. It's what really keeps people stuck on their butt, and that's being comfortable. When you're comfortable, oh, it's cushy at first. It's very, you know how comfortable it feels like jumping onto a good sofa, right? You've had a long day and you hop onto your sofa, it's just like your body just relaxes, and that's fine for a little bit. But have you ever noticed that like the longer you stay there, it's like you melt into that sofa, and it just gets harder and harder to get up? It's because you're comfortable. But remember this, no one grows being comfortable. You only grow under pressure. You only grow under tension. So you're not supposed to be stuck on your butt. You're supposed to do the opposite. You're supposed to get up off of your butt. How do we get off our butt? What do we have to do in life? Just yell it out. We have to stand up. We have to take a stand. And that doesn't take physical legs. That takes emotional legs. That takes persistence. That takes courage. And when you take a stand for your health, it's not going to be easy to get into the gym. Look, what I'm telling you is not easy. If you wanted to hear easy, go somewhere else. Turn on the television. Most of the things that gratify you, food, drugs, alcohol, surfing the internet mindlessly for hours, that'll gratify you, but it'll also atrophy you. 
What I'm here to do is to tell you some things that won't be easy, but I promise you will be way more rewarding. It's up to you what you do with it, though. So what you have to do is you have to take a stand for your life. You have to ask yourself, who do I want to be on this planet? Do I want to be somebody that just gets by? That just does a little bit more than the next guy? Or do I want to reach my full potential? Do I want to see what this body, this mind, this spirit is capable of? Maybe that's not for you. I had a massive realization a few years ago when I was traveling. The realization was I can't change anyone. I can't change you if I tried. I could follow you around with a mega, uh, megaphone just yelling in your ear all day. Hey, work out. Hey, you know, work on your studies right now. Hey, call up your grandmother, you know? And you'd be like, dude, go away, little creepy man. I can't change you. Who can change you? Yourself. And I'm not delusional anymore. I don't believe I can change anyone. I believe that I can only present information and be an influence to change. I can only be in the example. And when I'm not being the example, then I have to go back to working on myself. And don't think for one moment that I have this all figured out. I don't. The material that I'm teaching, that I've written in my books, that I travel the world speaking about, I'm still trying to master it. It still takes steps every day. But let me tell you, every day that you wake up and you work on yourself is another day closer to getting to be in your vision. So we have to learn to connect with people. That's the first element. The second element is we have to get off our butt. But I'm here to tell you that when you get off your butt, you're still going to have people around you. They're going to try to knock you back, back down. You're going to still have people in your life that are going to try to knock you back into your fears, your excuses, your insecurities. Maybe they're family, sadly. Maybe they're some friends. Maybe they're teachers, maybe they're colleagues. I don't know who they'll be, but they'll come into your life and they'll try to knock you back down. Raise your hand if you know somebody in your life that annoys you. Come on, be honest. Yeah, a lot of annoying people in this world, right? It's not you though, right? So we have these people in life that annoy us, that frustrate us, that get under our skin. But what I found interesting is we have to connect to those people too. We can't just connect and be good to the people that are good to us. Because there's no growth there. There's no feat of being good to somebody that's cheering you on. The question is, how do you treat people that annoy you, that upset you, that make you just want to go crazy? I know the power of connecting with those people. When I was in college, I had a child psychology course. And in that tri child psychology course, I had a, uh, a group of about 50 kids in an elementary school that I was working with. And I would leave my campus and I would drive down to this little elementary school and I would work with these 50 kids in a before and after school program. And so some of the parents that would drop their kids off would be single parents or two working parents. And so I had these 50 kids in a gymnasium, not unlike this. And in this gymnasium, I had them around me in a semicircle. We were half court on the basketball. And, I, and I, I had them around me, and I was teaching them valuable lessons. 